Hey guys, this is Market Update. I think we're all asking the same question right now, which is when are we going to get out of this insanely boring price action? 27 weeks of distribution from the all-time high. It makes sense going from 15 to 70K in such a short period of time. It makes sense that people are letting some go here. However, what's the next leg of this cycle? I believe it's gonna be the growth in M2, which is world money supply, US dollar money supply as well. And that's gonna lead us higher because the dollar is weakening a little bit. The central banks have colluded to do that. Raising of interest rates in Japan, right? As the uh, cutting of interest rates is essentially now confirmed for September in the States, they're weakening the dollar on purpose because people want to stimulate. And that means asset prices go higher. So let's look at that in this video. If you want to really get into uh, pixel peeping here, this was a high or a low. This was a higher low. Now, I take the candlestick bodies, that's how I was taught. Many people may look at the wicks as well, which obviously uh, is a breakdown of that price action. I believe this candle, where we had this huge dump, and then we actually recovered for a green candle, in the, uh, in the next two weeks, you basically got price higher. I think that's just really bullish price action if you want to, um, you know, peep pixels right there, but it's a higher low in my opinion. So I don't take the candlestick wick, so I was taught to stick to candlestick bodies. That's where the price action actually settled at. Uh, and so we are going a little bit higher here, but look, we're just in this boring price action. Wait for the election to be over. The market can then price in, uh, you know, whose economic policy will actually drive things. If you do trade, check out Bybit, $30,000 deposit bonus down in the description. Click the link, make a deposit on there. If you are new, you can get that deposit bonus. The more I study Bitcoin, the more I believe that everything I learned in my investing exams when I was, you know, starting an in industry was wrong or correct only within the fiat currency system. So if you actually take a look at how asset prices have behaved over the long term in relation to how much the money supply has been debased, what you find is that the vast majority of investment returns are not actually investment returns. They are just pricing in the debasement of the denominator, the, the dollar in this case, right? So this is money supply M2. This is the consumer price index. They appear to be correlated, right? So. It makes logical sense that if you have an amount of goods and services being produced and you have way more money supply just coming into the market, then those goods and services have to reprice to account for the increase of currency units in circulation. Same amount of goods and services, more currency units, they must be worth more in those currency units. So the more you get into Bitcoin, obviously you think that Bitcoin is now the yardstick, right? It's not the dollar, it's not other fiat currencies. The yardstick is just a true neutral currency that cannot have anything done to it. That's the yardstick. It's logically the yardstick because you have dollars and other fiat currencies which are completely unreliable in terms of being some sort of uh, measuring system. There's more, there's less, they print them, they take them out. How can that be at any reliable gauge for any value, right? So as money supply increases, then obviously assets will go up in price, inflation in goods and services, it makes sense. We've seen though, if you look at uh, the stock market, take out the Magnificent Seven, there's not a lot of growth there. If you look at corporate profit margins, they are not price gouging, they are not very high. They're actually just pricing in currency debasement. Money supply increases. And so what you have to do when looking at investment returns is take away all of this money supply first, and then you get the actual real returns. The problem with measuring from uh, USD is that it must be debased. So everything has to be actually uh, measured from that currency debasement. But again, that's unreliable. How much currency will be debased each year? How much will be printed? How much will be taken away? Again, completely unknown. So how can you run a system on that? How can you run your own treasury, right? your own personal treasury, your own savings from that? It's impossible. But will Bitcoin go up this cycle? Will Bitcoin continue to go up? Yes not anything to do with BTC. If you're measuring from dollars, then the answer is yes. Why? Because they must be debased. And so everything goes up. Inflation goes up, the price of everything goes up, price of Bitcoin will go up if you're measuring from dollars because the amount of USD in circulation is 21 trillion and the amount of debt outstanding is 35 trillion. The debt-based system is designed to do this. It cannot be paid off ever. And so the only thing it's designed to do is actually create more currency units to pay off the previous currency units. The M2 money supply in the United States is 21 trillion. Again, I just wanna point out 
This never goes down. Inflation never goes down. Money supply never goes down, right? You can see it's just one huge and exponentially rising, right? Because the amount of currency units that have to be paid off, you have to create more currency units to pay off. This is it. So this is essentially the Bitcoin chart because it's pricing in all of this as well. This is the national debt, 35 trillion. This is the amount of currency in circulation, 21 trillion. Those things don't match up, right? So we could say that there is a 100% possibility that over the next decade, more currency units have to enter circulation. And that means assets that can't be debased will price that in and go up in the fiat currency terms. Things get wilder when you realize that the vast majority of investment returns that we think are investment returns from traditional assets, you know, so real estate, 7% a year, you know, the, the S&P 12% a year, maybe the NASDAQ 18% a year. Most of that is currency debasement. If you look at the S&P, you just look at a chart over the last few years, it's just exponential. There's no way that those companies are actually uh, producing that much real growth. There just isn't that much real growth in the world economy right now. It's a very sluggish world economy. So all of that pricing in is just the currency debasement, which is insane. So when you know it's currency debasement, that's like 80 to 90% of the trade, then Bitcoin is that perfect investment to counteract that. From there, you can then make investments that may outperform BTC. BTC's current CAGR or ARR is like 40% a year, right? So that's the, that's the hurdle rate for any investment is it has to be annualizing at more than 40% a year and also has the same or a better risk profile. And there's very, very few investments I can see certainly large liquid ones that you can trade in and out of all the time that are giving us that, right? So this is the trade. It just is so obvious, right? And so we can actually take advantage of this because there's no way that these large institutions are gonna uh, you know, be able to react the same as us and actually put the amounts we can in, right? Because 1% allocation, 2% allocation, I don't think that's the play. I think it's more than that. This is Bitcoin's adoption curve. Look, it's going to continue, right? I mean, you can just see each and every cycle gets bigger. You've now got presidential candidates talking about it, right? So four years or eight years ago, that was unknown. The rate at which this is growing, it's very, very clear. And it is the debasement trade. So this is just the uh, Bitcoin adoption curve here. This orange line is net uh, non-zero address count. This uh, kind of uh, power curve of that right here. So I think the trade is not trying to pick these highs and lows. I think the trade is to dollar cost average, get a decent price and then wait like 10 years, right? Or two cycles or even three, four, you know, if Bitcoin is then annualizing at like 15% a year, 12% a year, then there's probably a bunch of other investments that you think, hmm, they may actually annualize at higher rates than that, so I can move money out. But for right now, at 40% a year, the risk reward on this is just insane. So the S&P valued in gold terms literally hasn't gone anywhere since the 70s. It's really important because it just shows that there's not a lot of real growth and all of the higher prices is just currency debasement. So just buy the thing that prices that in the most, which is BTC, and it has more fundamental growth than any of those things, right? This is Bitcoin valued in dollars. And of course it's going to go up in dollars because dollars are debasing, but dollars aren't the yardstick anymore Bitcoin is. So this is a 40% average rate of return or annual rate of return, 30%, 25%. The moving average I think will move something like this, right? So in two cycles time, 250 to 300,000. Right? It's not because Bitcoin is doing anything special, it's just because that is the natural rate of currency debasement and Bitcoin is a desirable asset that is proliferating out. But if you go and value Bitcoin against gold, it is also adding value. Why? Gold is mature, it has a 2% inflation rate, Bitcoin is younger and it has under that now, it's saying at 0.9% and that's, already, that's gonna get cut down to zero. You can also see that Bitcoin reacts to uh, money supply and the reduction of that over time is bear markets. And as M2 explodes, that's bull markets. Again, because Bitcoin price is in that currency debasement. You can see that here. These are the bear markets here. You can see M2, which is global money supply, just inflects down during these bear markets. Bitcoin price is that. And then as M2 goes up, Bitcoin price is that. So what I would suggest is don't worry too much about, about cycles. Don't worry about bear markets, right? These are short periods in time, whereas the play, right? The odds on play, if you're playing the odds, is just to understand that any fiat currency that you want to measure this in, it's going to debase against Bitcoin 
because Bitcoin is a desirable monetary asset and those things are designed to, de uh, to debate. So this is Bitcoin valued in the S&P. You know, again, the yardstick, the S&P, Bitcoin just has more fundamental growth in the S&P. But look, we aren't in bull market territory right now, right? We haven't broken out. We haven't reached all time high, right? So we've had a nice little run. We're coming off now because we have had that nice run. But if M2 explodes again, and we know it will because it must do, because the dollar has to debase, right, to pay the debt. And so as that happens, what's the fastest horse? It's not the S&P, it's Bitcoin because it has more fundamental growth. The thing that attracts most institutional investors, professional investors, larger investors, billionaires, and just normal people like you and me to B BTC is that it's not the r rate of return that it gives us right now. It's the potential longevity of what BTC is. There are many things that outperform Bitcoin. Nvidia's outperformed Bitcoin this cycle. Solana's outperformed Bitcoin. But none of those have the potential longevity and the market size that Bitcoin has, right? Bitcoin is not a platform. It's not a crypto platform. It's not a coding language, anything like that. It literally is just a protocol for money. But ironically, that simplicity actually gives it way more longevity than other things. And so it takes out the risk of those things, right? Because tech platforms can all be replaced. A new competitor comes in, right? If you look at all of the existing billionaires and what they want, and what they desire, it's BTC and it's not those other things because they have a tech platform and they know that these other tech platforms are essentially rivals to them. Bitcoin is something completely different and unique and you can plan for that over very long periods of time, right? So people think this thing is gonna be around, you know, way longer than their own lifetime. So you can make long-term plans for that. That's why I call this the sweet spot trade and the trade of our generation because you have something that is potentially world money like gold and so extremely long-term but right now you have this outsized return because the network is growing. So it's that sweet spot where, look, it's gonna be outperformed by other stuff this cycle. But that's not really the trade, right? The trade is that probably you're on the younger side and you need to plan for the next, what, 20 years. And so what can you plan? What, what is gonna be the same? What is going to be reliable over that time? That's gonna be the best risk adjusted investment and not very, very risky volatile things uh, which you know typically have a lot of risk in, and that risk over time eventually plays out, and that's not good, right? So Bitcoin has all the risk stripped out of it. There's no CEO, can't get arrested in France, and the price drops 30% overnight, right? All the risk is stripped out of this thing. That's why all of these larger investors like it, because it's li less risky, which means they can plan, and it has this outsized growth right now versus all of these other larger assets, right? So Bitcoin performance versus other assets, MAG7, Great, Mag Seven's great, right? The tech stocks, they are great. They're a monopoly, oligopoly, huge, lots of uh, actual real growth over and above the rate of currency debasement, still nowhere near BTC. As B BTC comes down, then maybe you have to look somewhere else. But this is the sweet spot trade because we have something that's gonna potentially grow into the largest asset in the world, right? But right now it has that outsized growth. So the sweet spot trade, the trade of our generation, I think. If you do trade, check out Bybit, $30,000 deposit bonus down in the description below. I'm James, this is Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.